This is a <clears throat> brief synopsis of the working with babies approach. That is the basis for my book and for the sem seminar that I've been offering annually for about 10 years. And uh, working with babies is a particular approach blending several different modalities. And working with babies is a special area for therapy. Uh, and with babies, our leverage is uh, at the greatest it will be in life. You know, as the twig is bent, so grows the tree, and a stitch in time saves nine. These uh, truisms reflect the experience of working with babies, because you just do a little bit, and all of a sudden things get much better. Uh, tremendous leverage therapeutically, and uh, delightful, just uh, a heart experience as a therapist to work with babies. I just really want to encourage craniosacral therapists and polarity therapists and trauma therapists to expand your practice and please work with babies. Here's a method for doing it in a safe and effective. I'd like to say what is baked into this approach and I'm thinking in particular of five therapists, uh, five teachers, big influences for me, and those would include biodynamic craniosacral therapy, Franklin Sills, author of the book Foundations in Craniosacral Bi Biodynamics, and then polarity therapy, Randolph Stone, pre- and perinatal psychology, Ray Castellino, trauma resolution, Peter Levine, and the autonomic nervous system, Stephen Porges. What we're about to embark on with this seminar is going to be pulling those into one therapeutic package. So as a summary, we're going to have the foundation, we'll call it phase one. Phase two will be craniosacral. Uh, phase three, recapitulation of birth. And phase four, particularly will be polarity therapy. Our foundation for the work is recognize that babies are sentient. They are way smarter than we realize. They are able to understand when we speak, not in the way we think they should understand. They have some kind of meta-consciousness that's at work. And I'm not just making this up. There's a wonderful book about talking with babies, a medical doctor who has discovered very good therapeutic outcomes by just speaking in a regular, slow, calm voice to the baby to explain what's going on. Those babies that had that treatment responded much better. We do not know how this works because obviously babies don't have the language yet, but they have some form of consciousness. They're a unit of consciousness with one foot still in the invisible world, where they came from. And so we have to adopt a cosmology that allows for babies as sentient beings. And that's the foundation. And without that, this whole thing is, uh, you know, uh, maybe helpful in small ways, but that's really the, the really most important basis. Can you shift your thinking? to really appreciate that babies are super intelligent. So we want to acknowledge babies for who they really are. And I have a sort of a recognition mantra, which is I know who you are, I know where you came from, I know why you're here. What I know who you are is you're a unit of consciousness. I know where you came from. You came from the invisible world. I know why you're here. You're here for the purpose of life, the fulfillment of consciousness. And I believe the journey of the soul, the process by which souls incarnate, find their way, and that's what we're dealing with with babies. If we can recognize for that aspect, which comes from Randolph Stone, if we can recognize them on that level, then the uh, work will go deeper. Then. Uh, next is going to be establish a relationship with the ordering principle through the tide-like movement in the body. 
So first we recognize who they are, and then we recognize the health that's in, inherent in all people, and especially in babies. And babies have unique uh, adaptations they have to go through, through the birthing process in the very early childhood. And by reestablishing with cranial sacral therapy, the tide-like movement, full range of motion, all the way up and widening, all the way down and narrowing. By reestablishing that, we can help reset after the adaptations necessary for the birthing process and that early, very early nursing, all the different things that have to be accomplished. And then next in our sequence is going to be disengagement of the cranial base. Um, babies coming through the birth canal have a certain pressure. It crosses above their ear if it's a natural birth, and they have other pressures for intervention births. And in all cases, it's very helpful to help that group known as the cranial base, the occiput, sphenoid, and the temporal bones, to help that group reset itself into its most expansive, most range of motion, fullest potential for movement. So we use cranial sacral therapy for that. Then our phase three is in some babies, depending on what happened, there may be more or less need to kind of uh, restore what was expected. Babies have a blueprint for the sequence of events leading to their taking a new life and uh, taking a new body and being in the world. And the, uh, when that sequence is disturbed through interventions or difficulties, hardships of the birth, interruptions, uh, things didn't go as desired, then sometimes the system itself gets a little bit cycling around the events that happen and as if it's kind of forgetting the way it was supposed to be. So by uh, doing a, a birth support process, which I explain how to do in the book, do a birth support pro process a couple of times, not for what happened, but for the way it was supposed to be. And we do that repetitively, three, four, five times in a session, and babies will start to uh, show much greater ease and comfort. And uh, many small problems, feeding, uh, nursing, I mean, uh, uh, digestion, sleep, many small problems are shifted by helping the baby recall or remember, reorient to the way it was supposed to be rather than what happened. This is not like trying to recapitulate the bad things that happened or the difficult things. It's more about having to reestablish the blueprint, the original design that was maybe thwarted by events, but the program is still running in the background. We want to help elevate that program back into the foreground of the baby's experience. And then lastly, our last phase of the process is about the parents especially, and about the baby with the parents. And here we use polarity therapy. Polarity is superb for this. It's very important for the baby that the ch parent's relationship be a strong bond. The child security comes from the parents being in good, coherent, supportive relationship with each other. And all kinds of disturbances can happen. Uh, among one that's very common is that the baby begins to form a bond and the father begins to feel estranged. The intimacy of that baby-mom bond kind of makes dad uh, superfluous, whereas actually they need to keep and restore and maintain and use consciousness to maintain the primary bond between the mother and father. That's where baby's security comes from. Baby will feel insecure if that primary bond has been transposed onto the baby. Baby knows I don't have enough life experience to uh, cope with an adult 
who has needs. And so take the baby out of that, let the baby rest, do, use polarity therapy, particularly the two chair method. Have the mom talk to the imaginary baby in the empty chair, back and forth a few times, hear what the baby has to say. Mom and dad talk to each other a few times, uh, back and forth in the empty chair, not to each other face to face, but to the empty chair so they can really get a body sense of what the other person's experience is, whether it's the baby or the uh, partner. That's the quick overview of what we cover in the seminar and what is presented in the book. And I just want to uh, leave with the intention to, you know, really try to um, uh, talk you into getting more involved with babies. Babies really benefit enormously from your therapeutic support.